What in the world is that? Oh, this is my 20 millimeter anti-tank rifle. Looks pretty old. Oh yeah, it's pretty old. It was made around World War II. Hmm. Yeah, seems like a great idea. How about your ammo? I'm sure you've got some fresh ammo for it, right? No, actually I have some original ammo and this is about a hundred years old. You know, you're not the sharpest crayon in the shed, are you? Your 15 inch neck scar isn't tingling or anything, you're not having like second thoughts. No, I don't really see a problem at all. Wait, what are you doing? I'm calling an ambulance just in advance. Hello, I need an ambulance sent to my location. Scooter, right. I don't need an ambulance. No, I don't need to know where to dig. I think you called 811. No, I need an ambulance. Right now. What's up, everybody? My name is Scott, and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. And I'm super excited about today's video because today I get to feed my big bore addiction. I am dedicated to bringing you the biggest guns in the world. And today I have one of the largest guns I have ever seen in my entire life. I present to you the Solar Thern 20 millimeter anti-tank rifle. So just for comparison's sake, today I brought out a Barrett M82A1. This thing has a 20 inch barrel and is chambered in 50 BMG, which is a gigantic round. But this gun compared to the Solar Thern looks like a deer rifle. This thing right here weighs roughly 120 to 130 pounds. It's about seven foot long and it's chambered in the Solar Thern 20 millimeter round, which is 20 by 138 millimeters. Okay, so let me just show you what we're working with here. This is the Barrett 50 BMG mag and that is not a small magazine. That is very large, but when it's compared to the Solar Thern mag, I mean, it just dwarfs it. And then here's your top view, and that is a pretty big difference. So the 50 BMG mag holds 10 rounds of 50 BMG, while the Solar Thern holds eight rounds of 20 millimeter, and it is a semi-automatic rifle. Now the 50 BMG has 660 grain rounds, while the 20 by 138 millimeter is packing a 2,330 grain round. So now let me show you the 20 by 138 millimeter, 20 millimeter round compared to some rounds you may be familiar with. So here it is compared to a 22 long rifle, 50 BMG, 700 Nitro Express, that's one of the largest Safari cartridges in the world, 338 Lapua Magnum, 30 Ot 6, 223, and 9 millimeter. And for those of you who are not around firearms that much, here is the 20 millimeter compared to a Kimball soup can, and here it is compared to a 12 ounce soda. And yes, it's soda, not pop, not cola, soda. Mm. Ah. And if you also love Mellow Yellow as much as I do, hit that subscribe button. And if you don't like Mellow Yellow, well, you should hit that subscribe button anyways, because we got some good stuff here. All right, it's finally time to shoot this thing, and I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't just a little bit nervous, you know, due to past events. But I am also very excited. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this firearm while we load it. So. This thing has a very, very stout spring for the recoil system. So stout that you cannot pull it back. So this thing has a literal bike chain inside it and a crank. So your crank is right here, pulls out, and then you literally just start cranking it. And we'll do one, two, three, and now it is all the way back, but before you shoot it, you have to return this back to the starting position. So now you'll go backwards, three cranks, and then you're ready to go. Here's a closer look for you. That is what pulls the bolt back, a literal bike chain. You may be thinking this thing is gonna have a tremendous amount of recoil, but sadly, I don't think it's going to. Because of its weight, its muzzle brake, and it has a reciprocating barrel, it actually tames the recoil quite a bit. So that kind of makes me sad, but I still think it's gonna be a blast. You have two options for your sights. You have iron sights, which that just flips up, 
and then you have a scope here on the side and this one is actually still crystal clear. So I'm gonna put the mag in now, but we're gonna have a little bit of a surprise when I do. That's one of its nifty features. As soon as you put that mag in, it's gonna load the first round. But after you go through your entire eight round mag, it will lock the bolt back and automatically eject the mag. And I'm sure you may notice that the berm looks a little bit different and that's because we had to take extra safety precautions when shooting this gun when it comes to rounds this big you do not want to shoot at anything angled even dirt you need a flat surface so came out here with my tractor and gave my berm a facelift normally i would just lay on the ground but i am oh so sweaty and i do not want to pick up a bunch of dirt and grass so i'm gonna lay on a piece of cardboard today Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's situated here. Okay, let's ride the lightning. Holy cow! That is stinking awesome. I totally just fell in love. Something I failed to mention about the solar third, you'll notice here this trigger is absolutely huge. It's actually a two finger trigger. Not one finger, two, and it is very stout and takes a very long time to pull it back. So that means you better have some flinch control because you have to keep those sights lined up for quite a while. All right, ignore this hole. That may have been when we were making sure the gun was safe. Just take a look at this hole. Spray painted a big circle here. I was aiming about here. And we hit right there. And I have to tell you, that looks pretty deep. That's a big old hole. I mean, get my whole arm in there. So this gun is pretty old. And from what I understand, it has not been fired much. And ammo is not exactly easy to find. So I want to know if these rounds are good enough to actually get this thing to cycle. So I have three rounds and we're going to take another whack at it. I'm going to watch my fingers. You definitely don't want them anywhere near that bolt when it closes. Holy cow, dude, holy cow. Ejected the mag. Look at the ground right here where this bipod is digging into the ground. Look at this side over here, just eating the dirt. But sadly, she not be kicking. Okay, I think I have established that the gun will function 100%. I am tired of shooting dirt. Let's just take a few shots at a few targets and see what kind of energy transfer we get out of this 20 millimeter. <laughs> that mag is already just out because I only loaded one round. Uh, uh. Okay, let me get lined up here. I'm gonna use the scope this time. Kinda hard to get to get up on it. Oh. Honestly, I'm surprised I hit that. Shooting one five gallon water jug definitely was not enough, but we still put one heck of a whopping on that thing. Okay, I hit here and blew out the side. 
So I'm thinking I'm hitting a little to the left. Actually, I was wrong. Looked at the slow-mo footage. Turns out I hit to the right. So this time I'm gonna aim a little bit to the left and I'm gonna be shooting at a four inch cinder block, which honestly, that's literally like a piece of paper to this 20 mil. Let's see if we can actually hit this thing. Holy cow. I'd say we hit it. Also, I'd say my earplugs were not in all the way. So at this distance, it looks like I am hitting about five inches to the right and a little low. So that time I aimed at the edge of the cinder block and I almost hit dead center. Uh, we pretty much turned this to gravel, no problem. Now I'm kind of curious to how much concrete we could actually make it through with this thing, but that's for another day. I do have one more target for today's video though, and I'm pretty excited about it. So our last target is going to answer an age old question. What would a 20 millimeter anti-tank rifle do to a zombie? Little cicada shell. <laughs> Those are always fun. Yeah! Let's get this thing loaded up one last time. Ah, such a big mag. Okay, let's see if my Kentucky windage is true. Oh, wow! Okie dokie. I'd say I hit it. So I was aiming very high and to the left. I was almost aiming above his head to the left and we still managed to hit the cheekbone on this side. So I know that my consistency with these rounds is a little bit off, but still we did a lot of damage. We painted this berm and I feel like we're about to open up a portal to another dimension from all these rounds of 20 mil hitting my berm. it let me know what you thought about the 20 millimeter solothurn in the comment section down below and let me know what you'd like to see me do with it next did you really think that you were gonna get out of this video without getting destroyed if you did indeed enjoy today's video be sure and give it a like and if you're not subscribed to kentucky ballistics make sure you hit that subscribe button oh that's very satisfying ow Stupid horse flies. Also be sure and check me out on all other social media platforms. Links to those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com where you can pick up a shirt that is not drenched in sweat. Unless you want one that's drenched in sweat, and I don't know, maybe we can do that for you. I don't know, I'll talk to Bunker Brandy. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. I'll see you next time.